Hello all you fellow hackers. I'm King Link and today I'm doing a last look and review of Exapunks. By the way, that's Exapunks, that's all in capitals. Don't know why, but that's how they've uh, stylized it. If you do enjoy this review, please consider subscribing as I'm working my way to 100 subscribers to get my own YouTube URL. It would be a big move for me and I would appreciate your assistance with that. So, I need to put a little spoiler warning here though. I am playing the game in the background and I'm going to show you how it works, but for the most part I'm optimizing my previous solutions. It's not the most exciting gameplay, but that's the style of the game technically. However, I will be showing solutions on the screen for a number of early levels, the first 5 to 10. If you want to change tabs and listen to my review, that's fine. The only thing I will mention in the spoken review is the number of levels, special levels, and maybe a couple concepts as well. With that all said, let's get started. I am going to start by saying this is a Zaktronics game. If you haven't seen my TIS 100 Quick Look review, I pretty much said I give the entire line of Zaktronics a 5 out of 5 because of my level of enjoyment with them. So will this game actually continue that level? We'll see. So let's start with the story in this game. The story truthfully isn't a focus of this game. And it's hard to really criticize the story, but the theme of the game and the style is included there, and it's a bit lacking. There's really three big issues I have with the story and theme. The first one is the game makes a big deal about hacking your body and being sick with this phage, as the game calls it. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The phage is supposed to be really hurting your character and disabling him, and it's destroyed his arm as well as his eyes at some different points in the game. It's really an interesting concept, but it's one barely talked about in the game and never seen. It's a shame because I could have seen it as a unique twist to a couple levels. Sadly, that's not how the game works. We never see the player limited, and that's a shame because it could have actually brought the story into the game world. The second issue I have is that at the start of the game, the game is trying to get you into programming, and it does so fast. Very fast. You know, there's actually a clever system to get you the instruction manual where it's posing as a zine. Now, if you weren't alive in the 90s, zines were these small magazines that people would write and try to get people to read them. You know, we call those blogs nowadays. Technically, I run with it as well. King Link Reviews, check it out. So, that being said, the beginning of the game kind of wants you to feel hopeless before this point of getting the zine, but it throws you in a pit for about 10 seconds and immediately throws a ladder after you for you to get out. I just wish the beginning of the game was a touch longer or a little more drudgery so that you could feel that what a great opportunity is to escape from the non-hacker lifestyle into this world of playing with the Exas. That's E-X-A-S. So finally, the third problem I have with the story slash uh, themes is that the character development in this game is a little weak and it wants you to care. And you know, I'm sorry to say that because again, it's not the real draw of the game, but the AI construct Ember 2 is really the only character that gets any development and all of that development's at the end of the game. Nevas, um, the person who delivers your drugs, and Gast are two other characters, and they appear, but most of the time they kind of appear to give you stuff or start missions, and that's it. There is a third character who appears in a single scene, but she just feels unnecessarily completely, and I actually think Nevas could do it uh, herself. Uh, I know I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Uh, so, I've said that the story doesn't matter, and really, I'm having trouble dinging the game for these things, but I have to call them out because I think it could have been just a slightly bit better, or I can imagine a world where the phage is actually an actual challenge to you, and it makes you feel like you've actually accomplished something by your hacking. However, I do have to talk about the zine more. And again, I, I love the fact that you have a zine, and that's how you're learning about stuff. The zine is called Trash World News, and flipping through it on my computer reminded me of days of reading 2600. I felt, feel like it's an underground magazine in all the right ways, and a special subscription. 
Honestly, I love that part of the game. The zine is the manual for the game, and it starts off with a really solid tutorial slash article about how to hack in the first two levels. Then it gives you hints about the next two levels. It's a great way to start to see the style of the game. After that though, it kind of throws you in the deep end telling you to go on. And the book does talk about errors in code, as well as the entire instruction sets for you robots, again called EXAS, E-X-A-S. And from there gives you the information for future tasks. But it's all cleverly written and done in a way that I have to applaud Zachtronics for, as it's a fresh new take that I've never seen in a game. It's all written as these great articles, like I said, it feels like it's coming from 2600 or any other hacker magazine, and it's a style that just isn't done that often. The fact is, also, you can look at the uh, zine as a PDF or even print it out yourself. The um, collector's edition or whatever it was apparently did have these in addition to the actual game itself. That's cool, but the fact that you can make it yourself is a nice touch. So, from there, the simple fact is, the rest of the game is all about that programming. There's changes here from other games, but ultimately you're going to be writing instructions for your exes to execute, and then completing tasks with them. Unlike the previous two big programming games from Zaktronics, which are TIS-100 and Shenzhen IO, you're not only writing in assembly, but have some other commands that you can use. The two big ones are going to be Link, which allows you to traverse networks, and Grab, which allows you to pick up files. You're also given two registers instead of just one that the previous games had, and that extra register is what I was begging for in TIS-100, and yet the game gives you enough tasks where I come back to asking for one more register, please, sir. It's done rather well, and I absolutely love that style. In addition, the limited space to program in in TIS-100 and Shenzhen IO, which annoyed me slash challenged me, has been expanded here, and the size of your program is now limited by the total number of lines you've written, not the entire lines in a single processor or a single node. Again, this is a great improvement and allows for some really unique programs that really made me happy when I finished them because they shined in different ways than previous games. As your program runs, there's also now a visual representation of it moving through the network, as well as showing the memory stored in each exa at a time. And it's all well done as well. The network is interesting and challenging, and the use of the exas are all about the skill of programming and programming acumen. There's also a good amount of variety of goals here. Now there's 30 normal levels, 5 battle levels, a Game Boy emulator, a Russian version of the Free Cell program, a Dreamcast game that's a match three, and each of those are well done and provide a good diversion. There's also a way to build your own Exapunks levels if you want to try your hands at it. The battle levels are actually the ones that really stand out to me for the extra levels. However, there's a couple pieces to those levels that I'm a bit iffy on. First, they're the battle levels, so they're kind of a diversion, but they are required. You're set up with a default AI, and you have to beat that default AI to progress in the main story of the game. And personally, I'm not a huge fan of that, because the battle levels take a different skill set and can be challenging. At the same time, the battle levels are all about different tasks with unique scoring, and the goal is to beat the enemy's score uh, as you're facing off against them. A great example is the first level, which is an homage to the hack, uh, movie Hackers, where you have to have your videotapes playing longer on the television system than the opponent's TV, and you can actually pull their tapes out and put your tapes in. You know, it's a great level, it's a great homage, and I absolutely love it as a concept. In addition, though, I got stumped on the last uh, battle level, and honestly, I couldn't go on. I had to double check if I was going down the right path with it, and I couldn't figure it out. I took a look, one look at the discussion groups and figured out what I was doing wrong. It was a small change that I had to make to make my program work, but the fact is, if I never figured that out, I wouldn't have been able to finish the game, and that can suck. The battles, though, limit yourself to friends, which is another problem. 
I only have one friend who's currently played Exapunks, and that's a shame because now I can only challenge him in those battle levels, and he hasn't beaten the game yet, so unfortunately I can only play the levels that he's beaten. I wish there was a way to play multiple people, I'm hoping Zactronics will eventually patch that in. So, the one other thing that I have to bring up is the 30 normal levels. Now, they're really diverse, and I have, and that's good, but maybe they're a little bit too diverse. There's three really interesting modem levels, and they're well done. They each appear about 10 levels after the last one. And the thing is, it's the only concept that returns in the game. The modem levels, I love the style of the increasing difficulty or a unique task in each one, but the problem is nothing else does that. There's concepts in the game like a highway digital sign, and there's a way to make it work, and then a second way to make it work, but you never use the second version of this system. Or, there's also an online video game that you play, it's a little bit like Ultima Online, and you have to do a small task there. You complete that task and you never return to that game. It's just that both of these things are done one time, and I wish I could have done it more. There's also a very interesting baseball statistics program that could have been interesting to try to do a different way. It's not required. There's no, never a return to that same style. A shame. So I actually wrote Zachtronics about this, and they said they're working on a few more levels, and they may release them before the game leaves early access, and is officially completed. Personally, I look forward to those extra levels no matter when they're released because I love the problem sets in this game. So yeah, ultimately those problem sets, yeah, it's a programming game. But it's a unique, wonderful programming game. If you played TIS 100, possibly based on my review, thank you if you did, or Shenzhen IO and didn't like it, this won't change your opinion on it. However, if you're interested in programming like either TIS 100 or Shenzhen IO, or just are curious about uh, something new and unique, Exapunks is here for you. At the very least, this is a game that should get another look by most people, especially those who keep saying they want unique and interesting experiences in video games. This is that unique and interesting experience. Now, I'm going to give Exapunks a programmer's 5 out of 5. Okay, that's a 5 out of 5, of course, but I'm giving it the small caveat of this is a programming, coding, debugging, optimization game. I love it, but I realize it's not for everyone. Still, just as TIS 100 is a fantastic game, I have to be honest, this is the game that makes me feel the most fulfilled after playing it. I can put 70 hours into Tales of Berseria and move on like it's nothing. But Exapunks I put 17 hours in and feel a real sense of accomplishment from beating the game. I feel it would be dishonest to give this game anything less than a perfect score, and that's what I have to give it. If you like that idea of min-maxing or trying to optimize your characters in other games, this might interest you just because of that. Otherwise, I still think it's worth taking a look. Now with that being said, my time with Exapunks is done at least until I see more, but I'm so happy I played it. It looks like I'm going to be taking a look at 7 billion humans next, and I'll dig into it explaining how it's different, but I also have uh, the review for Yakuza 0 coming up as well, finally done with that, so look forward to either of those reviews. I'm King Link, and I am out of here.